Yeah, from Senegal. We can typically, with enough genetic markers, distinguish Fulani ancestry, but there are lots of ancestry from other neighboring populations, and they have a European lactose tolerance mutation. Where did that come from? I don't know. But another great example of the Maasai in East Africa. Um, surprisingly, to me at least, when we looked at those populations, and again, it differs depending where you sample, but there was a lot less Nilo-Saharan ancestry um, compared to Afro-Asiatic. And again, it must indicate that there was a lot of exchange, and I'm sure probably linguistics and other things would back that up. But I have a more broad question, which is I and my camera and other people have talked about um, genetic structure in Africa and using integrative approaches. Um, from your different fields, what can we say about how long structure may have existed? How far back can we trace it in Africa? And even if we were to talk about, say, the four major language families, people who speak the four major language families, how far back can we trace that structure? And also, Allison, you mentioned um, that the fossils, we don't see fossils that look like, you know, modern day San. Can morphology change so rapidly? that we might not even expect them to look the same 10,000, 20,000 years ago. Yeah. I'll go back. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I could just say something about the fossils. No, um, ancient humans 15, 20,000 years ago, none of them really look like us. It's a, um, if, if you do a, you know, if you put just modern humans, if you put them in a, a statistical analysis with Homo erectus, okay, they look like us. If you put them in a, just modern humans or modern humans and Neanderthals and you use um, upper Paleolithic uh, fossils from Europe and fossils from, uh, from Africa such as we have them and um, if you then use the modern groups of the world, the modern groups of the world including the San, um, none of the fossils fall into their, those groups because enough gracilization has happened in the last 10, 15,000 years to really change enough of what our skulls look That's like. That's true. I, mean, I don't know, really Chris, amazing. but you, you want to add to that? Or was well, I'd just add that, um, yes, um, we talked about this earlier, but it's possible that some dental features may go right. back and traceable, you know, maybe 50,000 years back. But I think if you have the skulls, as you say, of those individuals, they won't look like their modern counterparts. Their teeth may resemble them more greatly. But uh, physically, yeah, everyone 10 or 20,000 years ago um, didn't look much like their modern counterparts. And that's true of, obviously, Native American skulls that are 10,000 years old. They don't look like, much like modern Native Americans. Even in Australia, there's, there's big changes. Yeah. 